Yes. Oh, good. Um, congratulations on the on the film, you guys. I loved it. And I knew I was destined to do this because to watch the documentary and to do this interview because a few weeks ago, I'm flipping around on TV and there was nine to five. I got sucked right back in. I watched the whole movie again. And what struck me was I still laughed in the same pages. I still was cringed at the same places, but it still holds up. So I wanted to ask you, first of all, you know, Gary, let's start with you. What was it about this film that you guys decided to kind of go back down memory lane and give us this documentary? Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, we grew up with the film and, you know, we were young when it came out, but we just remember seeing the film. Our parents, they loved country music. We were from North Carolina. So, yeah. you know, we always had Dolly and Kenny and all the, all the greats playing. Um, but, you know, it wasn't until a couple of years later we watched it with our mom, you know, one afternoon and she was in the workforce. So I remember having a conversation, you know, do you have to deal with this kind of stuff at work? You know, because this is the way the film portrayed it. So that was the initial, you know, intro into Nine to Five. But then where we really got the idea for this film in 2018, Dolly and Lily and Jane, they really kind of started talking in the media We'd love to do the sequel, you know, but if, if we get the right script. And so that's right. kind of when it registered. This has been a movie. It's been a song. It's been a TV show. It's been a musical. Now it's going to yeah. be a sequel. So we kind of wanted to document the life of nine to five, which has been amazing. And then um, through our friendship with Camille, you know, she really loves to do the research. And she found out about the nine to five organization that Karen Nussbaum and, you know, Ellen Cassidy started. And Jane was friends with Karen. And that's how she learned about these issues. And so we kind of say when the fandom of nine to five met the feminism and the working women with Camille, that's yeah. kind of made the film that we've got today. Yeah, it's it's a extraordinary. I loved watching it. And and Larry, you know, I mean, what's what's so great about it is yes, you had all this footage that you had to go through, you had all this great material, but then you, you know, you obviously get to sit down with all of the leads, like that they're, you know, they're, oh my God, how how amazing was that to get that kind of access to Jane, Lily, Dolly, Dabney, everybody. I mean, that's amazing. It was incredible and it really showed you back in 1980, you get to visit what the stars were thinking when they were making it, but we really show you through the documentary how on point that movie was. Like yeah. they were, everybody was laughing, but they were hitting every single issue and getting in there and getting those points in. But we really, we knew right off the bat, we went to Steve Summers, who's Dolly's creative director. And he said, I love the title. I think it's a great project. Let me work on getting Dolly to sit down with you. And I think if you get Dolly, everybody else will fall into place. And that's exactly exactly what happened and it's yeah. just it's easier said than done there was a two-year span from dolly to the last one which was dabney you know we were we were working through luckily with dabney we got him february 22nd of 2020 right before covid shut the world down wow. so he was our last one and we were able to edit for 15 months that's amazing wow i mean I, honestly i loved and i love the stories like there were things that i didn't know like i i can't even believe that i honestly didn't know that they had not had a script, like they all were on board, you know, they got Dolly and everything, um, but there was no script. And then they wrote the script. That's so fascinating to me. Yeah, and that was, it's, it's really uh, Jane Fonda and Bruce Gilbert, it's their brainchild because, you know, Jane had gone to see Lily perform and then she heard Dolly and she just had this moment these are the women. She told Bruce, I want them cast. And then the script had to be written. So, you know, they've never done that, but it's just these women had such an amazing chemistry. And even, uh, you know, you can't write the way this has played out like for us because we we're now going to hot docs and we play on April 29th. And yep. April 29th just happens to be the day that Netflix said, we're going to release our final Grace and Frankie episode, which, which Dolly's Dolly on. So yes. there's just all this Wait, Dolly. You shouldn't be giving that away. Dolly. You shouldn't. That's a surprise. I've seen it. I've seen it. But that's not, well, I might have to cut that out because we don't want people to no, know no, no. that. That's a but great everybody knows. No, no, but everybody knows Dolly's on it. They just yeah. don't know what she's doing on it. They know she's in the episodes. That's true. That's true. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good point. Good point. All right. I'll, I'll let it slide. I'll let it slide. Because yeah, to me, when I saw that, I was like, oh, this, I mean, I've watched the whole, I, I, I get previews, so I've seen it. And, you know, just to, to segue into that, because what I love so much is the friendship between the three ladies, but of course, between Lily and Jane and to see 
you know, since nine to five to now that they're such good friends, but not just in actors, like, you know, um, their, their activism and everything that they do, they're so in sync. I mean, what surprised you about them? Maybe, you know, from what you, the old footage you saw to what they're like today, was there anything that kind of shocked you or surprised you about them? Well, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> I would say really quick, sorry, this was just right on my mind. Okay, so this past Friday at uh, Gromish Honey's Theater, Lily got her hands and her feet in the cement. So yeah. we actually went to the ceremony and we took the poster because we got like this, you know, Jane has seen the poster. She goes, I love that poster. So she came up and signed the poster and, you know, it, we just had a really cool moment with her. So we're sending her the poster because she actually wants it. And then nice. Lily came up, which it was her big day. She had tons of guests there. So she came up, she goes, Hi, Hi Lane Lane Brothers. How's, How's, your your movie movie How's your movie doing? So that was amazing. <laughs> so just to have that with those two icons, you know, and Grace and Frankie is the longest running show at Netflix. Yeah. Finally got Dolly on. So we're just, you know, we're so happy to be continuing our documentary as another part of the nine to five story. A lot of people are going to be really love uh, that Kelly Clarkson and Dolly Parton have redone yes. nine to five. It's a slow and haunting like duet yes. version. And, and we could make a documentary just on getting that duet done. Um, but the plan is when we get a streamer, they're going to go out with the song everywhere. So it'll be a big release for the new duet along with the, the documentary on the streamer. So we're so, so excited about that. I was going to say that because I, I just wrote a little synopsis, like one of the films that I write for website and one of them was yours. And I said, stay through the credits because that rendition with Kelly and Dolly is amazing and you know i'm sure you didn't have to like nobody had to twist kelly clark clarkson's arm to do that no because she kelly, loves kelly, dolly kelly loves dolly so the way it all started out really quick so steve summers who's you know one of our ips dolly's creative manager we were sitting at his house in nashville and shane McAnally, who is also you know he's a grammy winner he's on songland but he's another ep so steve just said to shane listen do something different with 9 to 5. Whatever you want to do, do something different. And then yeah. Shane came back with this version and Dolly squealed and Dolly absolutely loved it. So then Kelly came on board and they made it a duet. And the fact that they filmed themselves performing their part. So you actually get to see them singing it in yes. the end credits. We can't wrap our head around how that has played into the end. And that's just a great a thing that also continues the 9 to 5 story. Then the, the duet is, I mean, the song has been redone now. Yeah, it's fantastic. It really, really is. It, you're right. It's, it was a nice closer to the whole thing. Okay, so we have to address the elephant in the room here. I'm going to, you know, I'm watching the doc. I'm like, all I'm thinking while watching this was like, hmm, I think they need to address Harvey Weinstein. And then... Mic drop. Okay, Wait. mic drop. Like, like everything drop. Because the clip that you got of him in the red carpet, I literally screamed. At, like, literally, I'm like... <laughs> Oh my God. And then, then you address what happens with him. Please. Discuss. Yes. And I, I think it's so important. Okay. So we have the most amazing archivist and she just kept sending us nuggets, nuggets, nuggets. And then that was the mic drop nugget because what was going on with Harvey Weinstein at that time in 2009, all, all the behind the scenes that we now know what was really going on up until 2016. You know, so yeah. it really, we had to put it in there because after the Harvey Weinstein cancel culture, you know that that's not going to happen anymore or right. that if it is, it will be put right into the light. So we debated to put it in, to not put it in. And we wanted to put it in because it, it continued the story. And, you know, it's just the, to show what he was doing behind the scenes that he was, I don't want to give it away so everybody oh, will no, see no. it in there, but know yeah. what he had to do with the, the the musical at that time and then what yes. was really going on behind it is insane. I, honestly I was completely blown away and that you had what he what he said on that red carpet I, uh, I no words everybody right? loved it in there one critic said it should have stayed on the cutting room floor but we feel no. like it really drives the conversation forward Oh. And, and people gasp like in the theater with three, four, five hundred people. People are like, <gasps> "That's what I was like. That's what yeah. I was like." You know, I, honestly, I, I know you should absolutely not take. Oh, it absolutely, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. You got to address that that monster, like no question about it. So, at the end of the day, you know, when you look at what's this was made forty years ago, and we look at today, and we go, "Hmm, have things really changed for women?" 
Mm -mm. And it's, you know, it's all, we call it the core four. So the film really shined, shined a light on equal pay, equal job advancement for women, uh, universal childcare, daycare, and sexual yeah. harassment. So really, when you look at it, all of those issues, women are still fighting for. So one thing we wanted to do with the film, we really wanted to show the, the fun fandom of nine to five and the, yeah. the story nine to five. But we then wanted to be factual and, you know, informative and show the working women's movement that moved along as nine to five went along so you know getting that parallel uh it was it was not an easy balance because you don't want to hit people over the head right but you also you want them to take nuggets and learn from the film so that's why we just tried to weave them together and we feel like our our editors elisa benora and ori reese we always say their names because they just took hours and hours of footage and we carved out this this 90 minute story that we have today so we're really really excited about what we're putting out into the world and hopefully it'll bring some change yeah i hope so too well i, I listen thank you so much for your time i really enjoyed talking to you guys and i really really enjoyed this documentary i thought you did such a great job and it was a nice balance of, of both and you didn't hit over the head and it was interesting for me because i just watched mrs america so i knew more about uh, phyllis schlafly you know so it was all kind of coming together for me and i, I thought you did a terrific job so thank you so much Best, are you coming in for hot dogs? Or We're coming to the whole festival. Ten days. Ten days. We'll be there the whole festival. Fantastic. So we'll, get... well, welcome to Toronto. Our weather's getting much better here, so you're going to have a great week. And uh... We've never been, so we're so excited. We're going to host Q&As and do everything we can to just, just let everybody see the film. Absolutely. It's I, I'm putting the word out there. I really want people to go see it, and uh, you'll have good turnout. Absolutely no problem with that. So best of luck. Have a great time here in Toronto, and uh, we we'll hope to see you again soon sometime. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, buddy. Nice Thank time. You so I hope we get to meet you. Okay. Bye, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.